Hey fourth graders, so you should only be watching this video after you've done your study guide. If you have not done your study guide yet, stop this video, go back, complete your study guide, and then you're using this video to check your work. If you do not ever try to do it on your own, you're never going to be able to do it on your own. Okay, it's incredibly, 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 incredibly important that you're listening to this and that you do not just sit here and watch me to get all the answers. Because guess what? I'm not going to be right next to you when you take your test that comes right after this to give you the answers. I am not going to be right next to you when you go in May to take your FAST test to give you the answers. I'm not going with you to fifth grade to give you the answers. I'm not going to be with you as an adult to give you the answers. You have to be able to figure out the answers on your own. So if you haven't done that, stop this video, go back up, complete those worksheets on your own. There's three pages. There's not that many problems. There's only six problems plus a performance task. Complete those pages and then come back and watch this video. All right, so everybody who's still with me should have already done all of this work and now you're checking your work. I want you to check if you get something wrong, I want you to pause the video right when you realize that you've gotten something wrong and look and see what you did wrong, where you made your mistake. Okay. That's what I want you to do. That's how you're going to be able to learn from your mistakes. Mistakes are a part of learning, but the only way that you learn from making mistakes is if you figure out why you made the mistake so that you don't make the mistake in the future. Okay. So again, if you get it wrong, pause the video, look back over your work, see what did I do wrong, figure that out, and then press play and continue watching the video. Okay, now that we've gotten all those directions out of the way, let's go over these problems. An angle that has measured has a measure of 225 degrees is what type of angle? Ooh, this is a good question. All right, so let's remember what we know about our angles. An acute angle is oh so cute. It's less than 90 degrees. So could it be 225 if it's less than 90 degrees? No, right? It's a small angle. 225 is pretty big. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees. Is this exactly 90? No, it's not. All right. An obtuse angle is bigger than 90. Okay, well, this is bigger than 90 but less than uh -oh, 180 degrees. Is this bigger than 90, but less than 180 degrees? No, it's not. A reflex angle is bigger oops, than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. Is this bigger than 180? Yes, it is. Is it less than 360? Yes, it is. So this is a reflex angle. Okay. All right. Next question. We don't see these bubble choice things anymore. Thank goodness when you take your state testing. So this would be like you would maybe have to type in the answer. Okay. So um, that I think is how they've changed it because you're doing everything on the computer before you had to learn how to fill out these grids. But we don't have to worry about that. However, we will go ahead and answer the question. How many degrees does the angle formed by points B, C, D measure? So if I draw that in, okay, how many degrees does it measure? Well, first, what type of angle is this? This is an acute angle. And remember I said an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. So when I'm looking at my two numbers, which of course I just wrote right over top of, but when I'm looking at my two numbers, I know I have to pick the smaller number. I wrote right over the number itself, but this is 40, this is 60, and right in between those is going to be 50 degrees. 50 degrees. That's what my measure is. It's not 130 degrees because it's not obtuse. It would have to be obtuse to be 130 degrees. All right. A rectangular floor of Juan's shed is 24 feet wide. I'm drawing it out. I always draw. 24 feet wide. 
and 32 feet long. What is the area of the floor? Well, I remember my area formula is length, oops, is equal to length times width. All right, they gave me the length and the width. I don't have to try to figure out one of them. That's a nice step. So I just have to do 32 times 24. Oh, Mrs. Long taught me in term one that anytime I see a double digit times a double digit number, I should do the area formula. Ooh, the area formula to find the area. How appropriate, okay. So I broke this into 32, 24. Do you guys remember doing this? This is a great review of your double digit times double digit multiplication. 30 times 20, three times two is six, two zeros. Two times 20, two times two is four, one zero. Okay. Uh, 30 times 4, 3 times 4 is 12, 1, 0, and 2 times 4, 2 times 4 is 8. And when I add 600 plus 120 plus 40 plus 8, I get 8 here, 6 here, and 7 here, right? 8. And if you need to draw the lines down to make sure that you have everything lined up, it's not a bad idea. 768 square feet, that's one of my answer choices. Phew! So that means I multiplied right. All right? Number four. Okay. Hiroko, Hiroko makes a rectangular sign for his friend's locker with an area of 100 square... 180 square inches, so the area is 180, and a perimeter of 54. She wants to make a new sign that has the same area, but a different perimeter. Same area, different perimeter. Select yes or no to tell whether they could be used. So here, we don't have to try and figure out, well, what would be the areas and what would be the perimeters? We just have to test it. We're going to have to test it to see if when I multiply, do I get 180, but I don't get 54 when I add it, okay? So let's take a look at it. We have 14 times 11. Is this a lot of double digit times double digit multiplication? Yes, but you can do it, okay? 14 times 11. Break that up into 10 and 4, 10 and 1, 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 4 is 40, 10 times 1 is 10, 4 times 1 is 4, 100, 40, 10, 4. All right, remember I'm looking for an area of 180. All right, it ends in a 4. I already know that that's not going to give me an area of 180 because it has to end in a 0. But I can keep adding. 4 plus 1 is 5. It equals 154. So that one doesn't work. 18 times 10. I don't have to multiply that one out. That does equal 180, right? 18 times 1 is 18. Add a 0. Any times I time I multiply something by 10, I just add a 0 to it. So it does equal 180. Do I does it have a perimeter of 54? 18 plus 18 plus 10 plus 10. Okay, 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 0 plus 0 is still 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It has a perimeter of 56, so that one worked. Okay, 20 times 9, I can multiply that one in my head too, right? Because I know 2 times 9 is 18, and I just add my 0. So that one does work for the area. What if I do 20 plus 20 plus 9 plus 9? What is that going to equal? 9 plus 9 is 18. Regroup my 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 58 for my perimeter. Is it different than 54? Yes. So that one worked. All right. I'm going to come... I'm going to fold my paper up 
so I have some more space. Because I'm running out of space. A different piece of paper is helpful. Okay, so this one is 22 times 8. Well, I'm going to stack it. I don't have to do my area model for this one because it's two digits times a one digit. Right? 8 times 2 is 16. Regroup the 1. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 1 is 17. It has an area of 176. Does it have an area of 180? Nope. Alright, and then last we have 30 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. Bring over my zero. So it has the right area. Does it have a different perimeter than 54? I can already tell you yes because I already know 30 plus 30 equals 60, right? But I'm going to go ahead and add it. You don't have to add it all the way out if you've already figured out the answer in your head. 6 plus 6 is 12. Regroup the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus 3 is 7. So it has a perimeter of 72. So those answer choices were marked yes. These two answer choices were marked no. Now, here it says to use a protractor to measure our angle. There's not a protractor drawn on this. If you are on fast, you will be given a protractor on the computer to use, okay? In fact, most of the time the angle is drawn right on top of the protractor, just like what we've been practicing. In this case, there's not one. If you happen to have one, great. If not, what I want us to look and see, what type of angle is this? This is an obtuse angle, right? Which means that my answer here is going to be bigger than 90. but less than 180 degrees, all right? My answer has to be bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees, but without them giving us a protractor. Some of you may have been able to solve it because you have a protractor. If you didn't, this is good enough information for that, okay? All right, number six is a written response question. So let's take a look at it. Sorry very dry outside. <laughs> Lots of pollen. My throat's getting scratchy. An angle that measures 135 is composed of three smaller angles. Two of the smaller angles measure 20 degrees and 75 degrees. Gyro thinks he can use the equation 35 minus 135 degrees minus 95 degrees to figure out the unknown angle. So I'm going to draw a little picture. All right. And this is an obtuse angle. I'm just drawing an obtuse angle. And I'm going to split it into 20 degrees, 75 degrees. And in this case, he's using X. So we'll put X degrees. So he thinks he can do 135 minus 95. Do you think he's right? Well, what does 20 plus 75 equal? Because I know that I would do... I'm going to write it down here. 135 degrees is the total is equal to 20 degrees plus 75 degrees plus X degrees, right? And I know first I want to add those two together. 5 plus 0 is 5. 2 plus nothing, or sorry, 2 plus 7 is 9. So that it looks like he's right, right? Because now I would have to do 135 degrees minus 95 degrees to figure out what's left, right? So is he correct? Didn't even ask you to solve the problem. It just asked us if he's correct. Yes, because why? Because it also says explain why or why not. So if you write yes, have you answered the question completely? Nope. <laughs> okay, you need to answer the question completely. Yes, because you need to add 75 degrees plus 20 degrees plus the unknown to get 135 degrees total and I know that 75 plus 20 
equals 95. So gyro gyro is correct. Okay, that's a sample explanation. It's not the only explanation, but that's what I did to figure out the answer. All right, last question is a performance task. This is kind of taking everything that we've been learning and putting it into an actual real life situation. Okay, so Dan is building a square porch attached to the side of his house. After the porch is built, he would like to cover it with one foot square tiles. Because so he built the porch and he wants to cover it with tiles. The diagram shows the measurement of the porch and the lawn where he builds. How many tiles will he need to cover the porch? Okay, well, he wants to cover the whole area of the porch with square tiles. So I would need six times six. He would need 36 square tiles, right? Which is important because when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's to buy your tiles, you need to know how many to buy so that you have the right amount. But after he bought the tiles, so he went and he, he went to Home Depot and he bought his square tiles, he decided he wanted a different size porch. He didn't like this. He's like, it's too square. I want something different. How could he change the length and width of the porch but still use the same number of tiles? Well, this was the area, right? The tiles covered the area. So this is a same area different perimeter. And we also have to remember his it has to fit in his lawn. So that kind of limits us a little bit. When we did same area, different perimeter, we had to find the factors. So we're finding the factors of 36. 1 times 36. Could he have a porch this size? He cannot have a length of 36 feet. His lawn is only 10 feet. All right, this even number, two times what? Two times 18. Can he have that size? Nope. Three times what? Three times 12. Can he have that size? Nope. Okay, what about four? Four times nine. Oops, I ran out of room, so I'm drawing my rainbow down here a little bit. And then we have six times six. Well, we already only have one option, don't we? Because these three lengths are too big for his lawn. So he has to go with a four foot by nine foot porch, right? So he could take it and have it go out a little bit further right, and not go as far back. So he could do four feet by nine feet. All right, that would still use 36 tiles, but it would have a different perimeter. All right, all right, there you go, guys. I hope that that was helpful. Uh, good luck on your test. Remember, rewatch any of the videos that you need to make sure that you understand everything. I know the area and perimeter stuff's a little bit tricky. I think that that's probably the trickiest part, but rewatch any of those videos that you need and you've got this. I will see you guys later on. Bye guys.